Hey, thanks for being here. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 263 is with Billy Mann from the podcast. Yeah, I F that up. I'm good. Good morning. Dude, I got to tell you, I'm a fan of your podcast, and I was really pissed off when there was only one episode last week. I, I wanted more. <laughs> oh, well, we've got, I, I think we've got, uh, which one did you listen to, or which one Kelly did you Rowland. see? Kelly Rowland. Kelly yeah. Rowland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. What what a conversation. Oh, my God. You, you have this way of getting inside the talk. And, I mean, it's not an interview. It's a conversation. I think... Um, What's so funny, uh, first of all, thank you. And thanks for having me. Um, having a podcast about effing up things with celebrities is weird, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> because, look, th- think about it. Celebrities are essentially asked to always speak about the highlight reel of whatever they're working on. Mm-hmm. So it's the album that they are putting out or the song they're putting out or the movie that's coming out or the book that's coming out. And it's, it can be really scripted, um, even the most personal, um, celebrities. So even for your listeners who are driving right now, they know when they listen to a celebrity who's selling their newest thing that they've probably answered those questions before. And what I wanted to do with, I F that up was, to challenge these celebrities to talk about the moments where they have fallen on their face, the moments they don't get asked about or they don't volunteer. And I didn't know how that was going to go, but it's been incredible. And I think part of what is meaningful to them is the same thing that's meaningful to the people listening to the podcast, which is you feel a little less alone and they're more relatable and you connect with them more and you're surprised by their moments of self-doubt and failure. And you realize that's where people do their greatest work is when they have the setback and then what they get out of it. So Kelly Rowland is one example of it. I spoke with Stevie Van Zant, who, yes. I mean, this is a guy that quit Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band <laughs> right before Born in the USA came out and he became a global phenomenon. And this guy walked his dog for seven years and then eventually went on, did the Sopranos and other things and is back on tour with Bruce Springsteen now. But each one of these experiences were so incredible to listen to, but also it just humanized me and them and the fans. And I love doing it. The podcast has been it's it's been awesome. Well, it reminded me so much of a conversation that I had with Randy Bachman from Bachman Turner Overdrive, where he says, "Arrow, it's pretty cool that you remember my hits, but you have not seen my misses." And when when I started listening to your podcast, I'm going, "Oh my God, this guy is going to allow us to step into the misses that so many of the creative people have gone through." Well, and what's first off, thank you for getting it. But I think what's so unusual right now is that you're listening to ourselves broadcast every day on social media all our perfect moments it's like you're all glammed up or you have the perfect filter and the perfect lighting and we're doing it our kids are doing it and the pressure to be perfect has never been greater i mean i've got four kids and i'm watching (laughs) my kids go through it it's just like if you weren't invited to a party but you see a photo from the party how does that make a kid feel or if you doing a project or you're on a, um, a sports team and there's a big play and you miss it. How does that feel? Nobody highlights those moments on social media. And ironically, that's the moment where you see character is born. That's where greatness is born, except we just don't talk about it. So hearing celebrities get into it and admit it, and then see where that's where they found reserves in themselves. Super inspiring for me. And I think you know, for people who are just dealing with the day to day of their job and dealing with the pressures of being parents it, uh, or being a, just being a person where you feel like everything is supposed to be just like the social media feed, living your best life. That's not real life. So hearing celebrities get into it, mm-hmm. it's really humanizing. And I think it's been actually really cool for them. I think they walk away really surprised by, wow, that was really, that was deep. Like I, I said some real things and I effed up a bunch of stuff and 
and it feels good to talk about it. And that's uh, another thing I'm really hoping comes out of the podcast. One of the things that we as creative people have to deal with is the image that others have for us. You know, the people think that, oh, you've been in radio all these years. You must have the perfect house, the perfect life. And it's like, and when they catch me in my real shoes where I do have a temper or I, I can't speak a sentence, then they're like going, dude, you, you're such a fuck up. Right. Well, um, I think, uh, I think we are all trying to navigate our, internal negotiation right which is we want to make the best impression out there in the world um because we want to achieve we want to do well we want to be happy but the secret sauce which any of your listeners know is that if you're in a healthy relationship either relationship with your job relationship with your spouse relationship with your friends you are it's healthy because you get to be yourself because yeah. those people experience you not perfect and they still care about they they still love you they still f with you they still <laughs> roll with you they all of those but all of those moments are not what bragging moments are typically about mm -hmm. and yet they're actually the moments where if we're great at anything they're they're born from those moments and i i just i want my kids to see that as the highlight not everything perfectly curated but all the imperfect stuff that you navigate that gives you character you know one of the things that uh, Stephen Furtick talked about last week was yeah when you make that big mistake look at it as that's the first step of a brand new beginning and I went oh geez I never even thought about that it's true by the way not only is it true but think about all of the greatest things that have gone on in history I, the the invention of penicillin was like mold in a refrigerator. You know what I mean? It's like, I just, I don't, I think that we, we overrate the perfect moments and we underrate the moments where we have to struggle because nobody wants to struggle. But when we see ourselves and how far we've come, the job we started that we had a tough time with, which then we master or the class in school that you start with and you don't think you can do it but you're inspired and you find your way. Those are the moments where people figure out who they are. Or listen, I'm a, I'm a dad of a, a, a kid with autism. Yeah. And you know, what I signed up for being a parent was I was, you know, I had my, my son was my first kid and, and I was supposed to take him to football games and throw a baseball. And that's not what life had in store for me and who I had to be and who he taught me to be wasn't what I signed up for, but the gift I got out of the experience is, is unexpected, but it, it's given me, I think more depth and that's one real life version. And then when you put that in the context of these celebrities who are on private jets and going to red carpets and, and at the bleeding edge of the zeitgeist and everything cool, we start to forget that they are also dealing with these really yeah difficult moments and when you learn about them you actually you love them more at least i did yeah yeah i'm a daily writer i've been doing it since july of 1994 and it's it's grown into a thing that i call defragging and when i defrag that's when i go in there and i start questioning and then i question the answers and i learn more about the mistakes made because i look at you know for the for the positive angle and i think maybe that's my connection with yeah i f that up because i mean you're you're, you're giving them that opportunity to find new places of peace Right. You know, uh, there's like so many great quotes about failure and that we overlook and they're right in front of us. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, Thomas Edison, uh, who invented everything, he said, you know, <laughs> he, he said his, his quote, which I love was, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we're, we're, but I, I just think that we're so hard on ourselves and and I want to change that conversation a little bit. And as a record producer, my job is to create a safe environment for the, the artists that I get to work with to be themselves and not feel judged while they are working it out, mm -hmm. right? Singing the songs, writing the songs with them. And I didn't anticipate that would be a transferable experience into a podcast. But when people listen to, yeah, I F that up, I hope what they take away from it is they're listening to these celebrities feel okay with being open about it and that they know it's the truth. I can't tell you how 
how unusual the experience has been for me. Um, but more unusual is seeing these very well-known famous people open up like this and how easily it comes out for them. It's, I guess it's not surprising because honesty always does better. Well, look at how how natural uh, Kelly was when she started talking about Sony Records. I mean, the two of you, when you dove into that, it, I was drawn into that story and the emotions and to hear the calm. Uh, but, but I know that she had to have moved through a storm during that. Yeah, I think I, I think Kelly's if you listen later in the podcast, you see the journey from mm -hmm. the music industry rejection, right? The idea that you feel like a sense of embarrassment in the way that a record company treats you. And then it grows into who am I as a mom mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. and as a, and as a working mom, right? Cause yes, she's Kelly Rowland and she's, she's a household name at this point with so many awards and all of that, but she's really focused on, you know, how to transfer that resilience and that constant, learning into being a mom and a wife and to take that little journey with her. I mean, it's a big journey, but to take it in a short period of time in a podcast and to go through it, you don't walk away thinking that her biggest F up or what she would think of herself as her biggest F up is, um, you know, she talks about her not meaning to reveal Beyonce's the gender of Beyonce's yep. baby, yep. Yep. which she thought was like a you know, a colossal uh, failure. And I think it was tough, but where the conversation goes is the same place that your listeners go, which is how are they doing as parents or how are they doing as spouses or how are they doing on their job or how do they see themselves? And what's so interesting to me is that whether you are going to bed at night in your mansion or going to bed at night in, um, in your small home, wherever you are, we're all going through the same thing when the lights are off and we're just trying to get to sleep. We're thinking about the same moments <laughs> so of self-doubt. And I, I, and, and I really, I grew to, I mean, I I'm friends with so many of the celebrities that I spoke to, but I grew to love them more and connect with them more. Just hearing them open up about, the, you know, when you step on a rake in front of other people or you feel like it's in front of other people. I, I it was amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Do you see doing the podcast as a release or is this a moment for you to teach? That's a great question. And I don't think that there's anything that I can teach other than that. I make all kinds of mistakes and I F up like everybody else. <laughs> I think that the teachable moment is more what we all have in common and how we take absolute positions in the world we're living in. And part of it is our social media feed is our kids are seeing everything is perfect and the perfect filter and the perfect light. And you don't see people openly highlighting their F ups. No one is like, I went to this party and at the party I bragged about the fact that I forgot to do something that cost me my job or I, you know, I, I drove my car accidentally into my garage and have to get it fixed. It's like, these are things that happen to all of us. We're all going through it, but we just, I think we're losing our humanity a little bit and we're not, um, we're not highlighting the fact that who we are and how we get better is through failure. It's not because someone just gave it to us. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of your listeners are driving a car or going to work or being who they are every day because it was handed to them. They had to work through it, work through fear, work through anxiety and doubt. And hearing a celebrity talk about their experience with it and their failures, it just, I think it's, I found it to be reassuring and I, I want it to be reassuring to my kids. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I'm, I'm, what, I'm what I call a, a silent watcher. I what people's body language controls where I'm going to go with a conversation. And that's one of the things that is it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because I'll, I'm always stepping into something where I shouldn't have been. Do you find yourself in a situation like that anytime? Uh, hopefully. Uh, yeah. uh, let me put it this way. I think I think part of figuring out who we are is testing the limits 
are around us and doing it in a way that's constructive. Like I have four kids and I remember trying to explain every parent has dealt with it. It's like, don't touch the stove. It's hot. Right. Like you can say that a thousand times, but at some point, you know, maybe your kid is going to burn themselves a little bit and you're going to put ice on it and they're going to learn. Yeah. Right. Now I don't suggest that the way that we should learn is by putting our hands on, on hot things. But I think that the human experience is testing our limits and trying things, knowing that we're going to fail at things. I mean, Michael Jordan has this famous quote. It's like, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career and lost almost 300 games. <laughs> 26 times I've been trusted to take game winning shots and I've missed and he fails over and over. And that's why I succeed. That's like the Michael Jordan quote. And I love that. It's nobody talks about the game winning shot that he missed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. We really focus on, and he's exceptional, but I think with all of us, we're, you know, nobody wants to talk about the moments or it's harder to talk about the moments, man, I really effed this up. Do you remember that time I really did this, which mm -hmm. is really embarrassing? No, but to the people that love us, the people that, that lift us and are with us every day, they're actually the people that love us knowing our failures and knowing that we have doubts and yet they, they roll with us anyway. And that is on a big scale for someone who's a celebrity, it's hard to find those moments where you volunteer. I F this up or I, I, I screwed this thing up with Beyonce or I, you know, I was dropped from my record company or I mean, who does that? Mm -hmm. And that's what the podcast is. It's like giving permission to talk about it. And what's interesting, Arrow, is that you, you've got to get special celebrities who are secure enough in themselves oh, to realize yep. that talking about it actually makes them even bigger. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, what I hope that when people listen to the podcast, they recognize that being open about your flaws and challenges and places that you need to develop doesn't make you less than it actually makes you more powerful because you're all, we, we are all works in progress and you're actually acknowledging it. And you can look at these people with their fabulous lives and learn that their lives, not always so fabulous. One of the things that caught my attention about you was, uh, I guess it'd be one of your mantras, the bleeding edge of pop culture. I mean, I love that term. That should be on a T-shirt and people should be wearing it. <laughs> well, I think that it represents where we are every day because modern culture, the, the zeitgeist, everything yeah. that's like cool right now is a moving target, right? So I think... I've been able to maintain a career in music, which is very fickle. I mean, you like something today and then it's gone tomorrow. I've worked with artists that have been at the top of the charts and then they sell real estate or, you know, they're really famous and then they become executives or they, you know, find their faith, move down a different path and you never know. And what I've really enjoyed in these conversations is talking to people who have managed to, find their footing for long periods of time in their career at the bleeding edge yeah. uh, of pop culture. And I think that the secret is their humanity is the, is learning from the moments that you fall on your face, yep. even in public, and then you get back up and you know what? The American public respects you for it more. Yep. I think we do. I think we love our heroes who have fallen and stood back up. I'm from Philadelphia. Rocky Balboa <laughs> is a real thing. Like that is, it's woven into our, it's who we are. It's what makes, it's one of the, one of the many reasons why I love America, why I, I just love this country, because we are built from trial and error. It makes us greater. Uh, so I, I can't say enough how surprised I've been in this podcast, in these conversations, because it's never what you think you're going to get. It's always the Forrest Gumpy moment where someone will tell a story and you're like, wait, you what? Yeah, right. And there's so much to learn from that. Wow. There's, it's been incredible. You got to come back to this show, Billy, because you have a lot to say. And I, I've got the platform to help share it with you. I, I First off, I, I would love it. And I'm really grateful to, to be able to sh share this podcast with you that you took the time to listen to it. And I just, I really didn't go into it imagining it would be 
commercially successful in the way that I look at making records as a right. producer or right. a writer. <laughs> but I'm really, honestly, I'm kind of relieved, Arrow, that I get to shine a light on this and that I see it connecting with people because I think I think it it's helpful to yep. for the people that are driving to work or doing what they're doing to listen to really successful people <laughs> talk about really doubting themselves because I think we all go through it. You bet. You bet. Man, be brilliant today. Okay, Billy? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm sure I'm going to F it up several <laughs> times, but I'll, that's what it's about. We got to keep going. All right, man. Have a great day. Thank you, Errol.